Um, so now, Si, very exciting. Yeah. We have got from Answers Investigation, oh, yeah. Private Investigator Joe Bate on the line. Joe, are you there? I am indeed. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Wow, well, no what problem? Thanks for having me. We were talking earlier about what is uh, the best job in the world. Mm-hmm. It's a cool job, isn't it? It's. I think it's definitely up there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, how did you? Before we get onto our, our mm, matter of inquiry that we've got for you, um, how did you get into that? Well, I've got a. I come from a, a legal background, but I started with answers uh, because I came down for some work experience um, a little bit earlier on this year. I think we're one of the only agencies, actually, in the UK that actually offered sort of work experience placements. Um, so I came down, spent uh, spent a week with uh, with the team, and. Uh, was fortunate enough to be offered a full-time position when one opened up a short time later. Great. And, and here I am. And, and uh, do you have to be very fastidious and organised? Like, I imagine I'd be awful as a private investigator, because I do, uh, I'm a bit haphazard and I do get distracted easily. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you, you've definitely got to have your wits about you and, uh, and, and be on the ball a lot of the time, yeah, absolutely. Because I'd be like, if I saw, if I was like trying to stake out, trying to find Cy somewhere, which is what we're going to ask you, how easy that would be in a minute, mm. And I saw someone walk past in a nice jacket. Mm. He could easily right. nip out at that point because I would be going. I wonder where I could buy that jacket. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like you, you, you've got to keep your focus and uh, and uh, just keep your eye on the ball, really. Yeah. I've got a question, Joe. So obviously you're you're relatively new to this. Um, as private um, investigating changed a lot, like with the internet and stuff. So imagine in the old days it was all about sitting in a car and following people and a lot of that. Whereas these days, surely, just with a sort of paper trail online and everything, you must be doing a lot of work in terms of, you know, on the internet. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think the, the whole industry has changed a lot, uh, obviously, in this, in this digital age. Um, you'd be amazed how much information is just readily available out there online. Yeah. Um, a lot of our work now is desk-based, but we do still do the old-fashioned surveillance, um, whether that's vehicle surveillance or classical you know, on-foot surveillance. That still does make up a, 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 a huge part of our work, but a lot of it now, nowadays is desk-based and uh, yeah. a lot of our internet searches and so on, yeah. Nice, fascinating. So, I don't know if you saw this program that was on recently, um, mm. Hunted on Channel 4. Mm-hmm. So, me and Si have been discussing today on the show mm. how hard we would... I mean, if you take away from the fact that we've got a radio show and that we uh, like do gigs quite often, mm-hmm. like if you took out that we worked in entertainment, so that wasn't something that we did, um, how hard would we be to find, do you reckon, like on a... Just as normal, like, how hard is it to find a normal member of the public? It completely depends on the circumstances. I mean, tracing is, is almost always, um, you know, it, it, it's never a straightforward process. Um, there's almost always complications and hiccups along the way. Um, it, it depends how far you go to sort of hide your identity and whether you want to stay under the radar, really. Um, you, I mean, look, we, we face a lot of difficulties, um, mainly because... The, we have to make use of information which is already in the public domain. Sure. Um, so unlike you know, public agencies, the police and so on, we don't have access to all sorts of like information CCTV that they have and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, things like people's mobile phone records and, and bank records and so on. Um, but it just means that we have to be creative and, and think outside the box. Um, but I mean, yeah, we, we, we always get there in the end. So say, I, so say I came into you and said I needed to find Cy... Mm-hmm. What sort of things would you, what information would you want from me? What would help you to find him? As much information as you possibly have. Uh, I mean, the more information you're able to, vi- to provide to us, um, the easier it is, the, mo- the, most, the you know, more straightforward it is, and the quicker the process generally is. Um, initially, we'd be looking for information such as the name, um, date of birth, uh, previous, previous addresses if you if, if, if you know them um marital status well, he's single uh, he's really single he likes mm-hmm. sharks mm-hmm. he lives in streatham above a big tesco's mm-hmm. all right mate, um, he's gonna start stalking me here mate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what what else do we know about him uh he's, he's got a beard and mm-hmm. uh hair but he, he did say before he's willing to change his appearance to get on the run no oh, it's one of those is he yeah <laughs> Very sneaky. sneaky, very sneaky. <laughs> he said that his <laughs> most likely his his mode of transport would be hitchhike mm-hmm. around, mm-hmm. Um, and then he'd um, empty his bank account mm-hmm. 
so he can't be traced by his bank statements or his bank card, and uh, he'd try and live in someone's basement and pay him cash for it mm. till it all blows over. Well, well, I mean, people that make the conscious effort to to stay hidden, um, it's always a lot more difficult. Um, you just got to use your imagination and, uh, and and be a bit creative, really. What's what's the thing that sort of gives people away the most? What's the like easiest thing if people do something that suddenly you found them? Um. It depends, really, because all, all all tracing cases are different, really. I mean, generally, generally, we we we, we always start by um, doing desk-based searches, looking at things like uh, electoral rolls, land registry, and so on. Um, yeah. That rarely gives us a result straight away. We invariably end up having to do sort of physical inquiries, um, just getting out there and, and talking to people, and uh, you know, people are almost always very very willing to to help you so do you go and not like knock on the door of a neighbor and be like, yeah exactly gonna... yeah i mean if we if if, if we know if you know their, their previous address and so on we can go and speak to the the current residents and see if they've got a forwarding forwarding address can speak to the neighbors you know um a lot of people do have information um and a lot of people are, 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 are very willing to to help so yeah. um yeah it's that, that, that's the interesting part when you actually get out get out and about and uh, and talk to people Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Joe. It's really fascinating having you on. Thank you for having me. No, and uh, if anybody does need um, a case solved or that someone found, it's Answers Investigation, right? Yeah, Answers Investigation is the company name. Um, the website is www.answers.uk.com. Uh, our landline number is 0207 158 and uh, yeah just give us a call check us out on the website and uh, give us a call and we'll be we'll be willing to have a chat with you perfect thanks very much have a great day and uh good luck with your career as a private investigator very exciting indeed thanks very much uh joe bait thanks for having cheers me. have a good day mate and bye take care bye bye